Bam, we are live. Thanks for joining us, guys. So here we are, man, another lockdown in good old Sudbury, Ontario. I was yeah. actually uh, just reached out to, uh, have you ever heard of the Kent Peters on Instagram, John? No. He's a black belt, runs a school out of Nova Scotia or something. And last lockdown, he, uh, he kind of said, screw it, I'm not closing anymore. Uh, so I reached out to him and I said, hey, what, what's the deal with you guys? Like, did you ever get, uh, you know, feedback on that or anything? And said, no, this time around, they're not even getting locked down. They're allowed to just stay open. So they're not getting impacted. It sounds like it's mainly Ontario and Quebec. Where you really? Yeah. Those are the two that I heard too. I mean, between Ontario and Quebec, I just talking to a guy out in BC today. Uh, same thing. Like, you know, I mean, they're, they're basically where they were and uh, where we were, you know, two, three weeks ago, you just you show your vaccine passports and stuff like that. But uh, gyms are still open, all that other stuff too. So. Yeah, I, I saw on one of the Waco Canada forums that the, I think the gyms in Quebec are still open right now too, right? I'm not sure. I haven't. Uh, I have to listen to Faraz. Go figure. They have a cur- they have they have a curfew where they can't they can't be out after ten, but they can go to the gym still. Yeah, I'd be go fine figure. with that. I'd be like, no problem. <laughs> you know, we'll all be racing home at ten o'clock, but that's fine. That's right. <laughs> I'm kind of. I wondering- think it's a. Sorry, man. Go ahead. No, go ahead, John. I'm kind of wondering if this is something that's going to, you know, uh, last, or do you think this is going to be like, you know, backing up and we'll kind of take a, a approach of the other provinces? Cause I think Ontario has the strictest uh, restrictions at this point. Some people would say Quebec does, I guess, with the curfew, but I don't think anything's actually, or there's not as much close as Ontario or am I wrong? No, I, I think you're right there, John. Um, I, I, I think, I mean, to answer your question, I think, uh, you know, we're probably eventually, I don't want to say like going to resolve to the fact that, you know, people are going to be exposed or whatever the case is, but it, it, it may get there. I mean, as we're seeing these new variants come and they're like a little bit less, you know, they're saying, you know, they're saying less intense, eventually there's probably going to be one. They're going to say, okay, you know, it is what it is, you know, everybody go and do, do your thing. And, 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 you know, try not to get sick and, you know, try and social distance and, and all that other stuff and wash your hands. But, you know, I mean, to keep hammering the economy is tough, right? I mean, that's tough on, on businesses like this one and businesses like, you know, restaurants and everything. They're, you know, they're all empty right now. It sucks. I, I can't remember, Frenchie, if this was you I was talking to or someone else earlier today. And it's, you're correct. It is tough on a lot of the businesses, but it's funny because it seems as though, and I mean, I'm not one to complain too too much but it, it seems as though like businesses like restaurants and you know gyms and martial arts centers uh we're the ones that actually you know screen people when they come to the door you know we're the I ones that actually stop them people. at the door and say hey have you been symptomatic in the last few days you know etc cetera, etc cetera. at our place we'd even have people we'd have some students that would regularly come in and take rapid tests i know a lot of our instructors would take some rapid tests before teaching you know um so the, the businesses and just like restaurants where they would actually do the contact tracing and, you know, ask you all the questions and have you wear the mask until you got seated, you know, all of these environments are the places that were actually doing what, you know, would be considered enhanced screening. However, we're the ones that kind of got shut down, you know, in favor. It's true. Of- I mean, if, if you look at, you know, I don't want to say let's pick on like what sort of like Costco or Walmart or whatever, but like those are the places that anybody can go in there. You know, there's no screening. There's no, you could, I could be standing next to six people with COVID and I would have no idea except for the app on my phone that tells me I'm in close contact if they've reported, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. But, yeah. But they're not shut down. Yeah. Looks like Peter join us. How you doing, Peter? We are live. How do you know? Pete's hey here? guys. Yeah. I'm joined. How's it going? Frenchie, right look at the screen, buddy. I there only see you. three other faces. Where are you? Oh, there's Pete. Oh, Mike's there. Holy shit. I've been here for a while, but I'm the one that talked to John earlier about this. Oh, it was okay, Mikey. Yeah. And it's yeah. true. Like it's, you know, we're the ones that because are screening. You can, yeah. Because you can go into any store right now. Yeah. And there's All no the screening. Are open. And there's no screening process when you walk into a Walmart or Costco. So, you know, like I said, I think, I think even the smaller stores are open. I, I'm, I'm literally starting to think that my tin foil hat is, uh, is getting itchy there. <laughs> it's like starting like, what the heck's going on? But you know, what did I that? miss? What did I miss, John? What did I miss? I was just saying, like, you know, we were talking about the restrictions in Ontario in comparison to some of the other provinces and whatnot. And then uh, you know, 
that uh, it seems as though like certain sectors get hit a little harder, you know, martial arts academies, gyms, restaurants, and uh, you know, we're the ones that kind of have the enhanced screening in comparison to some of the other, you know, box stores who, um, you know, for a lot. Well, of- I mean, it's, it's, it's a valid point. Where are the outbreaks happening? Like I haven't heard much of happening out of the gyms or out of martial arts academies. So are they just, you know, they're high potential situations or is it actually based on any evidence? You know what I mean? See, and this is where obviously, like, I don't think any of us here truly have that data. Um, but I can tell you one thing, it's going to be very hard to contact trace who was at Costco. <laughs> you know, it'll be, it'll be much, <laughs> Good it'll call. Be, yeah, it'll be much, much easier for them to, you know, call a random gym or martial arts school and say, Hey, there was a positive case. You know, we need all the, the class lists and, you know, to do contact tracing, like ours has a tangible, has a tangible um, value that they can actually pull data from. Whereas, and I'm sure most of you have been to like, you know, a box store, like there is no sign here saying you were here between this time and this time it just doesn't happen. Right. So I think that's I think it's I, interesting. Oh, sorry, John. No, it's okay, buddy. I think that's why like there's the data, even if there is data, I think that's why I would suggest that, you know, we're higher profile. I but that's, in, that's all based on bro, that's all based on bro science so it's okay like i can say with when i was going to like some of the local stores during the summertime like azilda greenhouse for example it wasn't mandatory that you write down your name and when you were there but they were in some way tracing who was in the building at the time yeah but I like, like the box I don't want to call out any other businesses, but yeah, like technically they would probably supposed to be, or actually, you know what, I don't know what their rules are for their sector, but. Well, I think, that's the uh, thing too. I mean, small businesses are probably a little bit easier, you know, to, to control, but when you get the big box stores, like literally anybody can come and go at, it would be damn near impossible for somebody to, to like catch everybody in the door and say, like, you need to, you know, contact trace or whatever the case is. But I, 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 I wonder if, and I, you know, maybe I'm, I'm, Maybe I got the tinfoil hat on too, but I wonder if the decision makers maybe don't quite understand like, you know, different parts of either martial arts gyms or different parts of, of, uh, you know, certain training gyms and stuff like that and kind of paint everybody with the same brush. You know what I'm saying? And saying like, you know, uh, you're, you're in this category, you need to shut down. Well, maybe there's certain aspects, you know, like you said, like the, the, the kickboxing and stuff like that. I mean, nobody's in contact with anybody for, for that matter. You know I mean? We could be hitting the bags uh, six feet apart, socially distanced. It'd be no, no worse than going to, to Costco, but they're going to paint that with the same brush as, you know, people who are like in close contact, lifting weights together. You know what I mean? So it's, it's, yeah. But yeah. The government have those uh, people they have like specialists and all that other stuff that are supposed to do this for them. Yeah. Experts as they call them. Yeah. What were you going to say Frenchie earlier? I think it's just a different like mindset a little bit for martial arts as well. Like uh, talking pre COVID era, even um, like if I felt a little itch in my throat, I was definitely going to Walmart like pre COVID. Um, mm. If I was coughing a little bit and sniffling, like if I needed something from Walmart, I was going to go, but I would never show up to the gym if I thought I was getting sick or if I thought, um, you know, like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sneezing a little bit today. I'll just take the day off and, and see how I feel tomorrow. And that was pre COVID. That was back when we didn't even care. So I can only imagine people coming to the, the gym wouldn't come if they thought they'd been in close contact with someone who had COVID or they wouldn't um, come if they thought they might have some symptoms or something even less than they would go to a Walmart where they might say, I, I, John, I need groceries. I'm going to go get groceries. Like it is what yeah. it is. Right. That's a good point actually. I, and I can say, honestly, that I've had multiple messages from parents, from students that it would say, Hey, just letting you know, we're going to stay away this week. So my, my youngest child has, has a little bit of a runny nose, so we don't want to compromise anybody. And I'm not exaggerating. Like I would get probably one of those messages, maybe not daily, but I'd probably get one of those for sure. I'd easily say weekly. So, I mean, our members were really good about that. And I think that's why, you know, knock on wood, we were so good at, uh, you know, not really having any type of uh, cases and exposures aside from all the other measures that were implemented. I wonder, I mean, that that's us here. And, and you know, I think, I think, you know, both, you know, you and, and Mike and, and, and Caroline and the whole team and everybody that, that's kind of, you know, been a part of it has done a great job at, at, at keeping, you know, that kind of openness and letting people feel comfortable saying, oh, you know what, I'm not, not coming in this week. But I wonder if, you know, in bigger centers or bigger gyms and stuff like that, if that's the same, same mentality, the same, you know, 
I'm, but uh, that's you know, I, you know even even locally I, I wonder you know I mean yeah, it's, it's I can tell you I can tell you pretty honestly like I'm you know through our we have quite a, an extensive network with a lot of the coaches in in specifically in Ontario and and I get along with actually like you know I'd say like 99 percent of the coaches here in Sudbury and you know with a hundred percent certainty I could tell you that you know there's a lot of gyms that never had not even one case you know coming from kids and yeah. kids on buses or anything there's a lot of gyms you know and I think that's why in our sector there's a lot of people that are very very frustrated because you know it's like anybody they feel like they've put in the proper work they've taken the proper precautions and they feel like they're getting punished repeatedly I'm not saying that that's what the intention is but that's I think that's you know people you can't fault of people for what they're feeling and, and I think that's the general consensus for a lot of uh, gym owners but yeah no it's uh it's tough but you know what I digress. I, I think the thing that, the, and one of the, not that I want to spend all this time on, on, you know, COVID and complaining, but cause we got the, with the bad news, we got some good news. We just ramped up our online training again. And, you know, I think the, the, the uptake in this round has been absolutely phenomenal. Like this week so far, we have seen, I would say a good 70% of our members pop in online throughout the last like three or four days. So, I mean, yeah, I'm super never happy. Online before. Was that Mike? It's that even people that were not online before are coming online. Yeah. I mean, I think it's because, you know, life has changed in the last two years. You know, I think there's a, a lot more, uh, there's a lot less hesitancy. I remember, you know, we were, we were, I think, and I, I'll go out on a limb and say we were one of the first ones in the province to actually go online uh, back in on March 17th of 2020. And, uh, you know, it was kind of like, you know, there was a big learning curve for, our society with zoom and everything like that that being said i wish i would have bought stocks in zoom you know <laughs> in march of 2020 i didn't think of it back then but the uh, i almost feel like people are good at lockdowns now you know what yeah, i mean like we've, yeah. we've had some practice people are good at it now it's like i, I don't want to say you flip a switch but i you know i kind of did i'm like okay well this is what yeah i know what to do you know what i mean we just go back to it and yeah and uh but, but this week we've had a lot of people like no, not no problems i've even you know, had a people that, you know, were absolutely adamantly never going to do it. And now they're, they're online. Thank God. Like, you know, they're giving it a shot type thing. And when things open back up, that gives them an option to keep going with that too. You know, if you can't make it to the club or whatever, I know I use the online stuff a lot when I, when I can't make it. So yeah, it's awesome. I've got the uh, Frenchie and Fiona are going to be doing some online jujitsu next week. Yes, oh, sir. Sweet. Yeah. Frenchie, are you going to teach us? Are you going to teach us bolos from your uh, from your living room or what? That's awesome. Actually, I actually have a little bit of a plan that I'm pretty excited. I've been uh, awesome. really, really studying up on passing. I've been uh, studying it a lot, so I'm pretty excited to share some of the stuff I've picked up on and uh, just I've some very passing the... stuff, Frenchie. Yeah, yeah, I've been All studying right. a lot of the uh, Mendez brothers and their students, and they always perform well at a very high level. And I think awesome. uh, a lot of cool little details that I. I, I thought I knew that I didn't know. So it's going to be neat because, you know, did I ever tell you the time I coached against the, the Mendez? <laughs> you should did tell you really? that story, John. <laughs> yeah. Did you really? <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah. I was. Who was your fighter? <laughs> Justin Hebert. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I wish I was good at Zoom because I'd put the picture of him getting choked oh. out right now. I don't, <laughs> check, I don't know how to do it. Oh, <laughs> you know what? I saw that match. I yeah. saw that match. I watched it on Flow Grappling. It's kind of funny because, like, yeah. I was more. Kind well. of, I was well. Number one, yeah. I was a little bit starstruck. You know that he was <laughs> Mendez was. You know, like literally just right over there. I thought that was pretty cool. You know, going back. Uh, when did that happen? What year was that? That was Worlds 20... 2017. I think it was 17. 2018. Was it, wasn't that his first match at Blue Belt? Yeah. The, had... the rest of my. T- the rest of my time here, I'm going to spend trying to find that picture and post it in the Zoom chat. I actually, so. actually oh, thought I can bring that up in two seconds. I, I know exactly where it is. I actually thought that's why Frenchie left for a second there. I thought he was going to look for it. Are you sure that's his profile picture? Because I think oh, he yeah. lost the bet and had to place it on there on his Facebook there. I just got an Instagram message from Justin. So I don't know if this is live or what's going on. No, but no, we're not he's scared watching. he might show up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're not live yet, but... Uh, the uh it's gonna it, I'll, I'll have it up before tomorrow hopefully but the, the funny thing right, is, well, if, is was this you know you giving the heads up no i'm just saying if you guys don't hear from me on tuesday or something just <laughs> come look for me yeah <laughs> it's just funny because like uh obviously you know 
the Mendez team is, you know, top notch and super, super high level. So I was kind of starstruck there. And, you know, Justin is, is obviously one of our top guys and uh, he was even back then too. So, you know, I was pretty excited for him to get off the mat and little did we know he's fighting like this absolute standout, you know, who is just an absolute killer. And I had never seen, I'd never seen anybody kind of like, you know, take it to him that way before. And I remember Justin kind of looking at me and I was like, hmm. <laughs> It was like, it was like, thanks, John. I'm like, oh man, it was tough. But you know, not that it made any consolation. But uh, the guy did go on to win everything at that world tournament. And there's oh, the- look at Pete's got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> you know what? But he learned from that. That'll never happen again. <laughs> Sorry, Justin. Blame Frenchie for that one. He reminded yeah. everyone. Frenchie, Frenchie you brought, brought it up. Brought it up. It's I'm, funny. I'm the, young, I, I'm the young Jamie of John's channel. I have to show the, the yeah, images and stuff that's referenced. <laughs> it's funny because every time I talk to Justin about that one, or every time he tells me about it, he always says, Man, I'm telling you, I shrimp like two mats of distance, and this guy was still like right there, stuck to me. Oh, like, yeah. And that really stuck with me. Do you remember seeing that, John? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember thinking, like, this guy's like a spider monkey. He just won't get off. Like, there was like no losing contact and Justin can move. Like this guy was just, you know, one step ahead of him almost like, but the rematch is coming. Right. So that's okay. This time we're ready. Yeah. The, um, it's funny. Cause when I watched their, their instructionals for the first time at one point, uh, Guy Mendez says, my athletes have always been known to stabilize the guard pass very well in competition. And I started laughing and I sent it to Justin. I said, does that ring a bell? Do you know what he's talking about? Maybe. (laughs) But yeah, all that to say, I think we're going to have some cool stuff and it's a lot easier to work some, some guard passing on a dummy than it is to work Baron Bolos. That's for sure. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, the good news is, is we'll get these guys in the gym. The, uh, and maybe, uh, you'll be able to demonstrate with like Fiona type thing, you know, for the videos and stuff like that. So it'll be good. And then, you know, we'll record it and put it on the, uh, on the, on the site so people can kind of reference it back. But for those of you who are uh, actually our jujitsu class on Wednesday, wasn't bad at all. You know, Mikey took, Mikey uh, taught the classes and we had a pretty decent turnout for both of them. Hey, yeah, Mike. that was all right. For sure. Yep. So it's well, a lot of fun changing, adapting. Basically sure. we have a beginner's class from six thirty to to seven, where we kind of focus in on, when I say beginner techniques, I don't want to talk about, uh, I'm not talking necessarily about shrimping and, and, you know, that type of stuff, but like, you know, very basic level passing, basic level escaping um, and basic level drilling. And then for the advanced class, I tell people it's kind of wide open, you know, and you know, what, what we're as an instructor team, when we kind of talked about it, you know, the, the format that we'd like to sort of adapt is kind of like, you know, almost like an instructor style teaching you know so like we're going to talk as much as we can when we're demonstrating the movement because you know like during a class and i and i'm notorious for this i try not to talk too too much and give people chance to drill um but here we're going to talk as much as we can we're going to kind of like let out as much information as we can so that students who may not have a partner at home can kind of watch and develop that you know jujitsu iq you know and they can kind of get a a taste of you know okay these are all the details because i mean like we Uh, just about everybody here can break down, you know, basic techniques and speak to speak to those techniques for a good 15 minute period, you know, so like we're going to not say we're gonna do 15 minutes, but we're going to give it a good two to three minutes solid on a passing technique, and then give people two or three minutes to practice and drill it, ask questions if they want type thing. Well, it's funny, because, you know, being the one that probably well, no, I did, I started the latest of everybody here on the on the class, you know, uh, or uh, on the call. Um, into jujitsu, you know, I got in and I started drilling right off the bat. And then we went in lockdown almost right after, right? And, and, and I was forced to do the online stuff. But for me, um, especially as a new person, getting all that jujitsu IQ, when I came back to the mats, I had a much better idea what I was doing. And, and I mean, I'm not saying that I progressed immensely, but I have since certainly since, you know, since I started. And I think just having that you know, sometimes, sometimes when you're in the club and you're a white belt and you're getting smashed all the time, it's great because it's a good learning experience. But then other times you're like, geez, I'm not doing anything right. Like, I can't figure anything out. But, but when you get that information and you can process it and you take your time and you try it on the dummy or you try it at home or, you know, you, 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 you start your roles on the wall, anything you can do, is, it it's a, makes a big difference. 
Um, I, I, remember, I found that really important actually. So, and you know what, you're right. Because there's, there's two or three of you as like you, John Muro, mm. um, John. Sean, you yeah. know, you, you guys were basically online that entire time during that last lockdown. And when yeah. you came back, there was a distinct, whether people believe <laughs> it or not, there was a distinct difference between the two or three guys that were doing it online, even with their kids or just watching and yeah. John Muro with a dummy, even there was a distinct yeah. difference between those people and the new people coming in. Like I remember me, Mike and Pete sometimes standing at the front, watching the beginning of the classes and be like, "Hoof, this is like, this is a beginner class today. Like, you know, like most people, <laughs> most people don't even know how, what a closed guard is type thing. So yeah. Frenchie, just a word of warning. So on Monday, maybe don't go too, too crazy on Monday with the beginner class anyway, like make sure people can ease into it. And then, you know, the advanced class though, guys is wide open. You know, we're all going to take turns teaching that advanced class and to get Pete and everybody in there too. And we're just going to, we're going to give people a full gamut. Of everything you know what I like about that too is that we can actually you know study some of the trends that are happening in jiu-jitsu right now too because I mean I, I I know I just watched um the world not too long ago and it's like you know everything's a lapel guard right now and everything's you know it, it gives you opportunity to maybe explore some different different topics that maybe you wouldn't uh not necessarily because you have the time to explain it right and it's not just go drill go drill go drill so you know I think you can probably get a little more in depth in some of those 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 things too which is kind of cool uh, Frenchie and I were talking, I can't remember when it was, was it maybe a week ago, two weeks ago. Yeah. And I was talking about that, that C clamp. Oh, for yeah. the C grip on those, on the, on the passing versus the grips on the pants. Right. You don't, you remember that conversation French? Yeah. Yeah. The C grips versus grab on the pants. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny because like, you know, I've always been, I'm, I'm, I'm a gi. I, I like the gi. I've always used the gi. And uh, anyway, we were talking about that, that style of passing with the hands and I'm not going to name the person that keeps passing my legs pretty quickly with that stupid grip. And, and it like, it just like dawned on me as soon as we were talking about it. I'm like, that son of a bitch. <laughs> I was like, you know, <laughs> because it, it's very quick. And I'm sure like, I'm sure these guys are going to cover it a little bit uh, next week, probably. But um, yeah, like it's the game changes so much, you know, Um I know yeah. when Pete and I were at the Worlds, you know, we were looking at the how many people were doing the ankle locks in the blue belt. Hey, Pete, I think it was like where you started seeing the ankle locks. Pete, you're on mute. Yeah, I just saw that I'm muted. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yes, John. I, so, <laughs> thanks, Mike. Because I know that, <laughs> that I know we were talking, like, we were watching the different divisions and we were saying, okay, you know, so these techniques are prominent in this division you know, these techniques are prominent in that division. And, you know, like even like I hadn't, I didn't travel for about a year and a half or so prior to that, but uh, you know, you did not see a lot of leg locks in the master's division. And now in, especially in the master's one, like, so like the, the 30 year olds, you know, like the guys up in the purple belt division, especially the lower, uh, per, like the lower in weight purple belts, like those guys are attacking legs and you better know 50, 50, you know, when you're competing in that division. That's what it all was when I was watching the worlds go through, like it was lapel guard and, and ankle locks at 50, 50. And, you know, I mean, it was nonstop. Uh, like you said, especially with the, the lighter guys, like the Mikey Muzumichis and guys like that, there's, they're all rolling for that stuff now. And it's, uh, you said the trends are, uh, it, it's, it's, it's definitely focused to a leg game. Um, who's that guy? That, anyway. Who's that guy that was the blue belt that won ADCCs French? Uh, Nick Rodriguez. He was the wrestler. No, no, the, the, the recent one, the light guy, the, sorry, the trials. I meant the trials, ADCC trials. Oh, Cole Abate. He trains under the oh, yeah. brothers. Like, and did he, he just get his purple? Uh, yeah. They gave it to him right before worlds. Okay. Like this guy just won the ADCC trials, you know, and he's like, he's one of the guys like, is he in your category Frenchie or was in your category? No, he's uh he's the 165. So he's a little bit bigger than me, but, uh, Winning the trials at blue belts is the equivalent of making the NHL at 15 years old. So like, that's it's, crazy. It's unbelievable. And that's just the type of talent that's out there. Well, yeah. you look at, uh, you look at, uh, Mika Galveo, for example, too. I mean, here's a guy that's under 18. That's, you know, cleaning up right now. That guy's super talented. Right. So I know it's interesting to see too. Like I've taken, uh, I always watch film, but I, during the lockdown, since I can't make it to the gym, I definitely watch a lot more film. 
And when I study film, I try and study uh, the specific subject I'm watching. So I've been watching a lot of the, the art of jiu-jitsu guys. So Tynan Duarte and uh, their Tynan Dalpra and uh, uh, Kola Bhatti, like we were just talking. Yeah. Um, the guy that beat Justin, actually, Matus, he's a, he's a brown belt as well now. And he's cleaning house there. And it's funny to see how schools have different uh, little meta in them, right? Like, and I think... Ontario doesn't represent the, the world meta very well. I think we're maybe, I don't know if it's that we're behind or the game is different because everybody plays different, but it's interesting to see how our little meta here is completely different from the little meta in California and the little meta in New Jersey and Austin and all that. Yeah. That's, that's actually a topic like that can get me going for the next hour about the, you know, world level jujitsu versus, you know, Ontario level jujitsu and then of course you know subri level jujitsu right like the um because even like you know like for us for like the lapel game in let's say Ontario like how much how much lapel have you seen you know really being played at the you know even at the say the best turn one of the biggest tournaments in Ontario the Ontario Open I've seen some when Pat brings guy bring down brings down some uh yeah some guys from Florida but other than that it's real rare that's right yeah like you know like maybe some of the top top guys you know, that'll use it. But um, yeah, like, I'm not saying that we're behind because, you know, like, uh, I just think we're just not as developed yet. You know what I mean? Like, like you said, in comparison to some of these metas and uh, some of these other that exist in some of the other schools type thing. So that's not, not even in a bad way. No, I think it's just way. different. Yeah, no, I, I definitely not in a bad way. I tell people that's why it's important to travel. That's why it's important to continue expanding your, your, your game, your knowledge, your, your jujitsu IQ. It's important to cross train. It's important to visit, you know, these other schools um, and, and get those different experiences, you know, otherwise you do become stagnant and anyone who says otherwise, I believe is, is probably wrong, you know? Hmm. So I, I think uh, we all, we all have done enough or know enough about jujitsu to play a little game, maybe for the people who want to watch footage and, you know, don't know who, or don't know, uh, what to watch type thing let's all give uh you know one person that we we like to watch and maybe one thing they're good at are you guys down to do that yeah i'm down That's like cool. i've been i've been doing that with the girls recently on our facebook group page with the female jiu-jitsu series i've been playing like i'll throw on a video every now and then of a couple of girls that i've been watching because as much as i do like watching the guys the, for the girls specifically i'll throw on like uh, Fion, I don't remember her last name, but she's from Ireland there and they love uh, it. They've been watching the footage and they've been watching these female jujitsu art, jujitsu artists. So, but I mean, I'm down for it. Yeah. I, I hate to say it, but probably one of my, not hate to say it, probably one of my favorite people to watch is uh, Craig Jones. You know? <laughs> oh yeah. Like for a few different reasons. Number one, his jujitsu is, well, it's B level, right? You know, it's B level. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't, yeah, I'm just joking. Um, he's always got top level. Hey, Craig's probably watching this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, this one Craig, out. if you're watching this, you know, it's like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the, um, but, you know, like the guy is entertaining as hell and he's, you know, he puts on a, a show. And then, of course, you know, jujitsu is top top shelf. So, I mean, the uh, he's probably one of my favorite people to watch. Michael Musi, um, Musumichi. Uh, Musumichi. Like the guy's, that guy amazes me, like at how good he is. And then you speak to the, not, not that I've spoken to him, you listen to him speak, you know, and like the guy breaks down techniques as though it's like an absolute science. Like, it's pretty amazing. Um, I'm a Galvao fan. I know like a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, oh, I know <laughs> Frenchie's gone. I'm a Galvao, oh, he's out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a Galvao fan. Um, I'll, I'll give you a couple of reasons and, and, and I'll explain why. Like number one, longevity in the sport. I, there's, there's something to be said about a person that can be uh, a multiple world champion in the adult division for that many years. Like it's not a coincidence. It's not a fluke. I'm not saying that he's the best now. I, I, it's my personal opinion that, you know, Gordon will probably beat him, especially in a uh, ADCC rules format. Mm -hmm. um, but like, I, I, I do respect him. And the guy is super, super humble. You know, we met him very, very briefly in uh, you know, uh, on a couple of different occasions, I've had the chance to meet him, but even uh, as recently as when we were in, in at the Worlds in, in Las Vegas, and just super, super nice guy, you know, you know, they they always have a, a habit of trying to make you feel like 
you know, you're one of the, their friends from a long time ago, you know? So, but anyway, so yeah, those are my, I know we're supposed to only do one, but I got too many that I like. <laughs> Let's hear from the boys in the back there, Mike and, uh, and uh, Pete, who do you guys watch? I watch so you I'm just, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry. Would you, would you say Mike? I thought I watch you guys. <laughs> Who's your favorite at the gym to watch then? <laughs> uh, I know the other day I was rolling with James a few weeks ago and I thought I pictured myself doing a bolo like Frenchie. It didn't end up that way, but I saw the picture in my head. So I figure that's seeing a start. That's a step one. Yeah. That's a step seeing. And I saw myself doing it. So, no, oh, it's coming. Give me another couple of weeks. All right, so your I'm turn. Just look. Well, I'm just looking up. So I'm the other way. I have good intent, poor execution. So <laughs> here's all my saved ones that I had to go back to and study. Because I was like, oh, I'm going to go look at that. And guess what? I haven't done it. <laughs> That's okay. So thanks for putting me on the spot, Frenchie. Well, of course. No, no problem. We do. <laughs> for, me being, for me being a little guy, um, I definitely uh, like watching Mikey Muzumichi. I think he's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty talented and pretty, pretty well known. And, and actually... He just fought uh, Bruno Malfacine in the um, in the black belt final in the uh, in the world, and and he's another guy. I mean, a little bit older, but uh, but Bruno uh, and time world uh, champion, I, I think Bruno isn't he? Yeah, multiple time, multiple Not time. Really. That guy, you know, he's he's another one that I I watch again, being a little guy trying to get big guys off me, um, and he's pretty good at doing that. Um, as far as the, uh, the, the, the bigger, the bigger guys, I like watch, actually, I, I like Tynan Delper. I think he's, he's really talented. Um, so he's, he's, he's got a shot. He, he did really well there at the, the worlds and, and, you know, I mean, he's, he's got a shot to be, be special. So he's another one I've been watching a lot. So. Sweet. Frenchie, who's oh, your team, buddy? Oh, Fiona's oh. got, Fiona, you oh. got yours, eh? Yeah, she already had hers. Um, I said, like I said, the woman from Ireland, Fionn there, she, I think she's fantastic. I, I watch her quite a bit. And then also Mikey is there. I think he's fun to watch. So. He Someone is, for you, Fiona. Eh? Yeah. Someone okay. for you, Fiona. Uh, there's a girl called Jessa Khan, K-H-A-N. Okay. And she is a, uh, a art of jiu-jitsu girl. And she really, she embodies their style as well. So if you have a chance to check her out, she's... Uh, Did you see actually another one too is Gabby Persenza, the one that just like ran through the whole uh, the whole uh, thing at Worlds. She she won absolutes. Um, she beat Gabby Garcia, like dominated Gabby Garcia. So that's another one to keep an eye on too. For those who don't know... Another one similar to you, Fiona, is uh, Danielle Kelly as well. Yeah, Silver Fox. Okay, all sorts of names here to take a look at. Yes, Silver Fox one. Yeah, that's right. Shout out, to, shout out to the Fox. <laughs> the the hey, couple Frenchie, that give, I enjoy give us, watching. Give us, yeah, give us your uh, your secret ones. I uh, I like the the low key guys as well. Like I, uh, you guys probably heard me talk about the Bolo Bros a million time in the last uh, the last two years, and uh, they were a really big influence on my game. They just got their black belt from Mikey Musumeci uh, last year, so. Big shout out to them. Did some online privates with them, and they were great at helping out through uh, Instagram. So every time I can watch their their footage, it's it's pretty impressive to watch. Uh, all the art of jujitsu people are always fun to watch. They really focus a lot on the leg drags. Like the we were talking about little gym metas, and that gym is so big on leg drags from top, from bottom, from everywhere. So I enjoy watching that. And then uh, all you guys know that for the no gi, I'm. Uh, little bit of a gordon ryan fan not not too much just a a little bit <laughs> i think a lot of people are just a little actually he's actually to, a cool guy too i'm just kidding to get the john's uh, reaction there it was pretty funny because for those of you who don't know and um, there's a big rivalry between gordon ryan and, and uh, gaval and gaval i guess walked up to gordon like they were gonna fight backstage and gordon slapped him across the mouth pretty good and calmed them right down. So when John sent me a picture of, uh, of him and Gaval, I said, how dare you not slap him, you traitor? <laughs> I'm thinking, I'm thinking that was in my mind that had to be staged for some type of promo of some kind. That's what I'm thinking. Had to be. Well, they, you know what? And they are trying to, uh, they're trying to draw some more publicity to the whole, uh, the whole sport in general. Right. I know uh, I listened to a podcast with Gordon Ryan not too long ago. And, and he, I mean, he's, He's, he's good for the sport to try and draw, draw people to it because he's got that confrontational personality. And 
I think that's what a lot of people uh, want and, you know, good for like, you know, places like flow grappling and stuff like that, putting on the who's number one and all that stuff. And it's kind of, you know, if you've ever watched one of their events, it's actually pretty well done. You know, I mean, it's, it's got lights and people coming out and it's, you know, it's, it's pretty exciting. And yeah. yeah. For, for like in September, you guys, we should go see the uh, ADCC in Vegas. September. Yeah. yeah the, the ADCC I do like Vegas. Cool. Yeah. I think the tickets are already sold out. They sold out right on uh, on launch, if I'm not mistaken. I think even Pat had to, had a hard time getting tickets, if I'm not the wrong. The ADCC ones in, in September, Frenchy? Yeah, the ADCC tickets went like... Uh, I follow the Mo Jasim guy. He's the guy that runs it now. And he posted that he was releasing the tickets at a certain time because it was uh, all the time zones that the major jiu-jitsu time zones had access to not being sleeping during the release. And yeah. the tickets are pretty much all gone from what I gather. You know what? We can have we can have an SMMA watch party. How about that? We'll watch That's it at cool. least. I, I will I will be there. I will be there. Yeah. <laughs> you know I what? We'll set up a TV on the gym. We'll have it all set up and we can watch. We can we're watch not locked matches. down. I haven't hey. I haven't missed I haven't missed one. I started going them with uh Professor Pat there. I started we started going to them. Actually, Justin came with us, the one in uh which one was it? The one in Helsinki was the first one. Finland, yeah, Finland. Went to the one, and before that, I went to the one in Brazil. So Brazil, Helsinki, and then where was the last one? Where was the, last the one, one where Craig Jones won was in Vegas? Did you go to that one? Yeah, I went. Or not not one. Or, but... Miami, or Anaheim. It was in Anaheim. I Anaheim, yeah, 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 Anaheim. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So last I've been, year was. I've been to those last three, and uh, I tell people all the time, like all all jokes aside, I'm like, jujitsu is one of those sports that you can literally travel the world and you know, have a reason to travel the world and see different things. Like, you know, that's one of the ones where I kind of pride myself that I want to go and see the ADCCs, no matter where they are, you know, we'll go and check them out because uh, one day Frenchie's going to be fighting there. So I want to have uh, the ability to know where we're going, what's going on, eh, bro? <laughs> we're going to have to get to the trials first. That's right. <laughs> cool. The, um, I can't believe guys, it's already been 40 minutes. So, I mean, the, uh, I hope everybody, uh, Number one, I want to thank you, guys, thank you guys for jumping in on the call, uh, kind of short, sh short notice, um, maybe like less than five minutes for some of you. <laughs> what? No, I didn't. Have, you know what? I, I don't have all my gear all over the. I was I was actually about to do Muay Thai workout for those of you guys who don't know. Yeah. I had my hands wrapped when I came on here and everything else. And John's like, "Hey, you want to jump on a podcast?" I'm like, "Yeah, of course." So <laughs> it's kind of funny. The hand grips off. Yeah. My, my, yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to try and uh, make these a little bit more regular again. And uh, even after the lockdown's over, I actually, like I was telling everybody, like these, these are one of my favorite things to do. They're just fun. Plus we get to, you know, one of the coolest things about, you know, being part of a martial arts team is, uh, you know, the social aspect. So, you know, it's always fun to see everybody and actually get to, to shoot the shit a little bit with everyone. So the, uh, thanks for coming out guys. And then, um, hopefully we'll be able to do this more. Uh, I want to tell everybody, if you haven't tried the online classes, come on out for all our jujitsu students. Uh, you know, Frenchie and Fiona will be heading up some classes uh, on Monday. So make sure to check those ones out, guys. And then, uh, yeah, for all of our kickboxing students and karate students, we've got a ton of other classes uh, online. If you need any help, make sure to reach out to any one of us and we'll help you get on, man. Sounds great. See you guys next time. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Take care, all. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.